On today's show, our final review of Test Drive Ferrari Racing Legends. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Gange here with my good buddy, Sean Cole. And today we are doing our final review of Ferrari, or no, I'm sorry, Test Drive Ferrari Racing Legends. And we have the PS3 version. And this title was developed by Slightly Mad Studios and distributed by Atarian Bombax. I think that was the name. And I'm assuming they're the US distributor or one of the distributors. Anyway, um, so we're here to give you our final or full review with our scores and a lot of you may have already either tried this game, rented it, or seen just about every level posted of it sure. somewhere on YouTube. It's sort of all over the place already. Yep. Anyway, Test Drive Ferrari Racing Legends will be available on the PC later this month, but right now we're actually going to test it out on the PS3 or review it on the PS3. Yep. And first off, we're going to give you everything they tell you about the game, the stuff on the box cover, the press releases, and then we're going to get a little more into it and tell you what we actually think of the game. Yep. Test Drive Ferrari is the ultimate driving experience for fans of the Ferrari brand. Detailed physics underpin a huge variety of challenges set throughout the history of this landmark automotive brand. Painstakingly detailed cars and tracks reflect visceral damage as races wear on. An acute sense of speed communicates the power of these highly tuned vehicles as the advanced AI challenges even the most experienced of drivers. You buying it? You know what? I would have bought it based on that. <laughs> now we're going to tell you what all that really means in sim racers terms. <laughs> um, anyway, this came out on July 3rd. 2012 for the PS3 and the Xbox 360 and like we mentioned it's coming out later this month for the PC actually I wish we had the PC version yeah triples anti-aliasing all that stuff but we didn't and back to more box cover stuff this title includes a variety of race type challenges including rally GT and Formula One there's single and multiplayer integration with a selection of racing styles up to eight players can race online at once there's 36 tracks, including variations. GP circuits, testing, and bonus circuits are included with a wide variety of driving environments. Tracks from the past and present are included. It also includes 52 cars, and these are the greatest modern and classic Ferrari models that are lovingly rendered inside and out, including working switchgear and visible engines. The car dynamics include realistic deflating tires and blowouts. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> There's a campaign mode where players experience the rich history of the Ferrari brand as they unlock tracks and cars throughout Ferrari's history. And then circuits can be unlocked as you progress, and once you do, you can pretty much run any car on any track as you've unlocked them. Yeah, unfortunately, we had a for the preview, we had an unlock code that unlocked all that stuff. We didn't have it for this one. Probably could have found one on the net, but we got enough out of it on the test. And again, we're testing this on the PS3, like we mentioned, and we were hoping that it would be compatible with the T500, since the T500 has a Ferrari-licensed F1 wheel that works with it, but it's not, and it's not compatible, and which is kind of a shocker, considering that's the best wheel for the T500 and the official, or for the PS3. Yeah. And it's the official GT5 wheel, but whatever. So we used a Logitech G27. Actually, I ended up hooking up a DFGT to a wheel stand, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we tried it. And again, slightly mad title. And this thing has got big time need for speed shift written all over it. Very much so. So that tells you everything you need to know about the game, or at least what they'd want you to know about the game. And now it's time for us to really get into it with our opinions. And I guess the first step is really deciding, is this an arcade racer or a sim racer? And do we then put it with the sim titles or do we leave it in that arcade world? You know. I guess we could call it Simcade, and Patrick Spence, who I've talked to quite a bit the last few years, he coined that phrase in our forums, and I thought it, it worked perfect for this title. Is that like a whole new section we have to add now? No. <laughs> We're just going to do this on the Sim side, and here's why. This title is developed by Slightly Mad Studios, the guys that are behind GTR2, GT Legends, Need for Speed Shift was kind of Simcade, but anyway, 
they're also the guys behind Project Cars, which we've been getting flat for not covering. Right. So we thought, hey, this is a Finnish title by Slightly Mad. Yeah. Why not cover it as, as a sim? And I was hoping to see a lot of Project Cars under the hood of this game, but I have to say it looks a little more like Need for Speed, and if this is Project Cars, then they got a lot of work to do with that title to get it to that true sim level. Absolutely, it's, it, it definitely needs some work. And, you know, but this is a console version that we're trying, and I'm sure the PC version is going to be slightly better. Slightly mad, but slightly <laughs> better. Um, you know, with anti-aliasing, triple screens, and all that stuff. Um, but it is what it is, and we're just going to get right to our review. So, that being said, we are going to put it on our weighted rating scale. Shabami, whatever you want to call it. Which we have right here, so we put it on all of our categories. And we're going to tell you our score, tell you a little bit about what we thought of that particular category, give you our final score, final thoughts, wrap this up. And these scores are actually our averages, so we each blindly scored it and then combined those scores. That's right. So should we get right to it? Let's get to it. All right, first things up is physics or driving model, and this game actually scores a 10.5 out of 15 possible points. It actually has pro, normal, and novice modes, and you're unable to adjust the driving aids but they seem to be off when you switch it to pro mode. The game ultimately feels a lot like Need for Speed Shift, where the slower cars actually have pretty good feeling to them, but once you get into the higher, faster cars, they just kind of kind of feel blind, like it just pivots on that center axis and it doesn't really drive, it feels. Yeah, and it also feels like there's some built-in aids. Mm -hmm. I'm going into corners slamming full brake and not getting any lockup. Uh, it's hard to get loose. The cars will get loose, mm -hmm. and the older cars have some good weight transfer feeling, but that's kind of where it ends. Yeah. You know, when you get into the higher cars, that weight transfer is like over exaggerated. Like I was driving the 87 F1 car and the thing's just like moving all over the place and I just, it just seemed kind of weird. Yeah. So 10 and a half out of 15. Next up, graphics. And we scored it a seven and a half out of 10. And they're pretty good, uh, you know, especially for a console title. You know, compared to a Gran Turismo or a, a Forza, definitely lacking a little bit. But yeah. uh, pretty good sense of speed. Yeah. Um, some funky shadows, you know, the blocky shadows. I think they took that from Gran Turismo, but it was actually a little more um, noticeable and like always there. I saw some weird blocky shadows too in some areas, but not bad. And again, pretty good sense of speed. And I'd say it's averaging about 30 frames a second, so. Yeah. And next up is sounds. And actually, before we get to that, we should probably take a little break, and then we'll come back and wrap up all these scores right after this. Tania's extensive lineup of radio-controlled vehicles provides hobbyists with the joy of running exact replicas of their favorite car, tank, or off-road vehicle. Another attraction of these vehicles is their use of high-grade materials such as nylon resin, carbon fiber, and polycarbonate. With precise mechanical systems, the maintenance and adjustment of the various components as well as performance upgrading with optional parts allows for truly competitive racing. For more information about Tania, visit us at www.taniausa.com. Welcome back to the show, and now we'll get right back to finishing off the scores for this uh, test drive Ferrari Racing Legends, and we left off with sounds, and the sounds are actually a 7.5 out of 10. There's a little bit of good sounds and bad sounds. You've got some good tire squeal. The engine notes definitely say Ferrari, and they're all different depending on the car. The environmental sounds are really cool, but ultimately there was nothing in there that really blew us away when it came to that audio quality. Yeah, I. I I call it like the goosebump factor, man. If I get goosebumps when I hear like a really cool car sound, then that, that says something, but didn't get any goosebumps with this one. And next up is tracks, and we gave it an eight out of 10. And lots of life in the tracks. Love the old school versions uh, of the tracks. Uh, you know, actually like Rouen, 
Monza, I love those old versions, you yeah. know, from, from our old Grand Prix Legends days. But uh, overall, pretty, you know, eight out of 10 is a good score. So Definitely a good score. Good variety too, lots of, lots of tracks, lots of yeah. famous tracks. So Monaco, yeah. Nordschleife, Monza. So yeah, definitely a good selection of tracks there. Definitely. And that takes us to vehicles. It actually got a nine and a quarter out of 10 or car models. And that's a good score. I actually think we were probably a little generous on that score. And I think that it's me comparing it to Forza and Gran Turismo. And, and actually the color models here are really good. I mean, it's deserving that score, but I think also part of it might've been my love for Ferraris and having that, that you know, many years of different Ferraris covered, and that's that's really cool. So they did a good job there. Quite a variety, yeah, and a, and a lot, I mean, pretty much every Ferrari you've ever wanted to drive mm -hmm. is included in this title. Next up, Fun Factor. I honestly didn't have that much fun with this game. I started to, I started to get into it, you know, the the black and white fading into the color, and but it was just boring mm -hmm. and repetitive, and you know, especially the second level, you have to hit, a, at least on the pro level, you have to hit a one minute, 50 second lap at Monza. And that's a long lap in those, you know, almost a two minute lap and trying to, to master it. And that car's kind of slow and it was just boring. <laughs> and honestly, I don't plan on playing this again. Once right. this show's done, I don't plan on booting this title. Even in multiplayer, I just don't see myself booting this up again. I just didn't have that much fun in it. And I love Ferraris. Yeah. Feel the same? I, I completely agree, 100%. And I think in my final thoughts, I'll probably summarize a little bit because for me, it's that fun factor that maybe hits this title the hardest. Yep, six and a half out of 10 is what we scored it. And that takes us to force feedback, which we already discussed a little bit. Uh, it, it has no support for the T500 when it comes to force feedback. So right there, that's taken a, a huge point out of it right there. We gave it a seven and a half out of 10. And uh, you know, that's a C grade and I think that's pretty much what it deserves there. Felt good on the on the G27. I felt rumple strips, weight transfer, um, but not spectacular. No. I mean, it was good though. I mean, if, honestly, if the rest of the game was polished and the physics were a little bit better on the higher end cars, it would have probably made the force feedback feel better. But yeah. uh, clutch works, you know, everything works, but uh, like you said, C grade. Yeah. Maybe B minus. Uh, next up, AI, we gave it a one out of five. And, you know, this title really needed to s strive, or it, its strength needed to be in the AI, and they're horrible. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm passing, like, it's like you, they start you in the back of the pack, and it says you have to win the race, three lap race. I'm like passing the whole pack by turn two. Yeah. And, like, I have like a two second gap by the halfway point of the first lap. Yeah. I actually, during one of my three lap races, stopped, let the whole field pass me, and then passed them all back and still won. That was the only way to have fun with the AI, was to and literally- And that's on full pro. Yeah. And yes, we're experienced sim racers, and it said in the, in the box cover, even the most experienced <laughs> racers, well, not true. You know what? Bump it up a lot more, and then let it, let the, non-experienced guys tone it back. I mean, I would imagine yeah. your pro and novice and all that would account for it, but come on. Yeah. And not only are they slow, but they're stupid. I was trying <laughs> to run that F1 87 car. Maybe it was because I was running at the 50 Silverstone track, because there's not that many unlocked on the single player, but they couldn't make it through turn one right. without wrecking every single time. So that's pretty bad. It's horrible. Yeah. It's anyway. So more on, that, more on that in the final thoughts. So if the AI isn't that good, then you really are relying on multiplayer for your racing fun. Yep. Um, and on multiplayer? It's one out of five. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately on multiplayer, they didn't do any better. It only got a one out of five. And that comes down to just some basics. Number one on the console, you just don't have great matchmaking. You have very few options to control the racing environment. Not always. Right. Gran Turismo and Forza, they, you know, they have some good options for yeah. that stuff. These guys, it's an afterthought. It was like, yeah. let's just slap that in and people yeah. can connect. Just turn it on. I tried to race somebody yesterday on the PS3, which was probably pretty Euro friendly time. Uh -huh. Not one person I could get to join a race, nor could I find any racing going on. And this title has been out since July. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if I gave it the score, but it was a Crickets. one Crickets. out of five. Goes down. <laughs> You know, the thing about this game for multiplayer also is I don't think it's really a, a multiplayer type game to begin with. Eight player max. Yeah, so. That's so, weak. Yeah. Next up, damage. Um, based on the box cover, 
sounded like the damage is going to be intense. Tire blowouts and all yeah. that stuff. I could not get a tire to blow out, nor could I get the car to feel like it was damaged. I was running cars into the wall at high speed to try to end the session, and I couldn't kill the car. I couldn't get the car to damage. Actually, I think at one point I got the visor to crack a little bit, <laughs> but and maybe it's a Ferrari thing, you know, but don't put it in the box. Don't false advertise. Yeah, don't pat yourself on the back for it if you didn't even do it. Maybe I needed to run a longer race because it said over longer races that you... For the tire blowout, but still the overall damage. Not there. Yeah. One out of five. Yeah. And that takes us to presentation, and this is an area that I think they could have just done so much better. Uh, when I think, you know, mystery, speed, you know, they, where was the, the, the narrative voice taking me through the whole thing in that UI? And, and if I could think of what other games have done and put it into this, this could You've done great, mate. That's what you get. <laughs> That's and, it. Yeah, he, he, they don't guide you at all. Yeah. It's like, finish well here and you're going to do good for the team. It's like, well... And then I got to read all this text about what we're supposed to do. It's like... You'll have to try harder. Okay, this is where the big boys come out to play. Go show them where it's at. Get us on a podium finish. The one on the right is the accelerator. Put a little more effort into the yeah. user interface, especially yeah. if it... it Anyway. And when I think of a game and, and something like as big a marquee as Ferrari, this could have been just an epic history type game with that added to it. And they didn't, and it just kind of left it where it is. So in presentation, we gave it a two out of five. If you're used to the slightly mad interfaces, as far as setting up your wheels and stuff, identical. So that's all in there. But yeah, two out of five is what it deserved. Next up, cost. And you know, it's really only worth it if you love Ferraris, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're a true Ferrari aficionado and you really want to drive every one of these cars on these tracks, then get it. Otherwise, not so much. Rent it. Rent it. Well, <laughs> we'll I'll get to that in my final thoughts, which speaking of, uh, two out of five out of cost. Speaking of, we're going to take it to final thoughts and I'll start and... Uh, what about a final score? Oh, final score. Our final score out of 100 was 64. Actually, I think it was 64 and three quarters, but okay, we'll run it up to 65. <laughs> but yeah, it's just overall, and we're gonna get to the final thoughts here. Just, I'm gonna put what I wrote here. This is a half-assed effort. I'm sorry, slightly mad, but what were you thinking? Just slapping the Ferraris into your engine and selling it to Atari. I, I just, I kind of lost respect for you guys here in this, and I'm really hoping that you make up for it on the Project Cars end, but. To me, it looks like you're just trying to milk what you have. Yeah. And I'm I'm disappointed. Yeah. You know, I was really hoping for a lot more out of this title, and 65 I think is fair. Yeah. And I would have loved to have seen it more in the 80s, where I think it could have been with some more polish. But you know, and considering how long they've this, you know, we talked about it in our first look that they had this title in somewhat of development long before Need for Speed Shift. Right. And they were before they were slightly mad. They were whatever the name of the company was, but yeah, I just expected a lot more out of them, especially with all the work they're doing on Project Cars. I was hoping that some of that was implemented here, and if it is, you guys better get back to the drawing board. And Lots I'm not gonna say to that it is, because I honestly haven't tried Project Cars in a while, but, and we will here soon, need some work. Yeah. Your turn. Uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda. This is a game that I just think could have been spectacular. It could have been the kind of game that we actually bragged to people about. Maybe it was never intended to be a great multiplayer racing game, but on that whole chronological history, uh, fun factor, this should have been spectacular. AI? Yeah, and, and it wasn't. And for me, that's a huge letdown. This is a game that I wanted to love. Honestly, when we first started playing, I thought you were playing a joke on me. I thought I was playing the old version still because I didn't see any big improvements from what we saw before, and that was a disappointment because... Biggest improvement I saw from the the uh, preview was frame rates. Yeah. There was some serious frame rate issues in the, in the preview, but I'm sure they, you know, got everything packed and condensed and, yeah. and flowing fine. Frame yeah. rates were not an issue in this title. I didn't have an issue with that at all. Steering lag was there, but it was minimal. But, you know, pretty much inherent in any console title. Yeah. But uh, anything else? No, I mean, you said it a little bit earlier. I, I really doubt that we're going to be picking this up and playing it much more. You know, we have a lot of options and driving games out there, and my expectations are high, and this didn't meet it. Yeah, and we get invited to do multiplayer races all the time, and I don't think even if I was invited to against some of my best friends, I would be like, eh, can we do something else? Because yeah. this 
And you know what? And this looks amazing. You know, and this, looking at this, it's like, wow, that, this could be a great title. But anyway, slightly mad, shame on you. And uh, we're hoping for something better out of Project Cars. And I think that's about gonna wrap it up yeah. for our final look at Test Drive. We're not gonna do the PC version. It's not gonna be worth our time, to be honest. But uh, that's gonna wrap it up for Test Drive Ferrari Legends here on Inside Sim Racing. Go to our forums, insidesimracing.tv forward slash forums if you wanna discuss this title. We have a Test Drive section set up. That's gonna do it. For Sean Cole, I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Well, car break? I might be stuck on someone else. No, I'm on. I am on another car, I believe. <laughs> there you go. Oh, the car's probably gonna be perfect. <laughs>